of the Lord, and they were cheering. And at the end, I almost like it was like a giving up or are with. Um, we are with um, some special guests. Uh, welcome to Ableton On Air Live. And we are um, talking to my friend here, um, Sheke Musa Drame from the Parkchester Times and the Muslim Media Corporation. Uh, welcome to Ableton On Air Live. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on one more time, my friend. Yes, and um, we are uh, talking about worldly issues uh, when it comes to um, the Paralympics actually is um, starting tomorrow. Uh, we are uh, talking about that. Um, so the Paralympics start tomorrow, and they go until they're in Paris, France, and they are um, going until September 8th. Uh, you know, the Paralympics is a, a wonderful thing uh, to see, you know, uh, lots of sports, uh, sports such as wheelchair basketball, uh, uh, even pickleball, for example. Uh, what is your take on the Paralympics? No, I think it's an excellent forum where inclusivity is the name of the game. You know, oftentimes when we plan activities, you know, we uh, unfortunately do not properly plan, you know, to be inclusive of everybody. So I think, uh, you know, having individuals with different abilities being able to compete and participate and enjoy themselves is something that not only must we welcome it, but we must promote it and you know, I think it's a great, great, great opportunity for, you know, you know, for 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 the for those who are promoting inclusivity like you. When we talk about is um, um, inclusivity and being inclusive, uh, in your t in your definition, what exactly does that mean? Well, you know, um, what I mean is that we all have different abilities. Um, um, someone can can you hold on? I'm I'm merging the other call. We have the other sports. Uh, we have the other sports anchor. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, I'm I'm merging you guys. Um, welcome to Ableton on here again. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay, go ahead. Go on, Cheke. Um, can you um, what exactly do you mean by um? Being inclusive. Yes, what I what I mean is that you know um, someone not being able to stand up or walk or run does not eliminate for the abilities that they may have, and not only do they have it, but they may even compete with them. So when you have a sport, for example, that is inclusive of individuals with different abilities and different talents. You know, it enhances the flavor, and it also shows that well, you may lack this, but you may, you know, have you know others, so that nobody will be relegated to being completely disabled. I mean, pretty much nobody's completely disabled. We have different abilities, different talents, and therefore, you know, having you know a game that is welcoming to individuals and wheelchairs and you know other. You know, mechanism, you know, enhances the flavor of the game. So that's what I mean by inclusivity. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Ron. What did you want to talk about? Uh, what did you want to say about that being inclusive in the um, Paralympics? Go ahead. Well, first of all, so first of all, it's good to have me here once again. Uh, by the way, I want to get uh, Paralympic Games to come up and fix it. It's amazing if it's tomorrow. There were, there were so many events, and I was just looking at a few of them myself, such as, for example, Gold Balls, one of them, which I never heard of that. But there's a lot of other stuff that's great because the current viewing is another expression. I know it's great to check out this one. But here's the best I want to see is Paris Cutting, uh, because they always have a good mental match. Because I, I like to see how these three athletes are. I told them the previous month, they are able-bodied people, and they were very incredibly uh, well 
off athletic claiming is one of them. And even Paris table tennis, something I hadn't seen yet. But I looking at by looking at all of this, this is gonna be a great, great battle team two weeks of uh, international competition. And I like to say to the uh, athletes over there the best plus because this is just a look at special but you are a very special bunch of great athletes, great individuals. And this is our second kind of horror looking game I'm watching. I've been seeing winter stuff this year. But this one for the summer for the second time, I look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Shake, when we talk about being inclusive again, you know, years ago, um, all we had was the Special Olympics. We're talking about the 1970s. You know, a lot of people with special needs were stuck in institutions and institutional life. And when Eunice Kennedy Shriver and the Kennedys created the Special Olympics, that really, um, you know, really started it all, you know. Um, anything else you want to say about that and how important it is for um, recreational sports? You know, because um, sometimes people with special needs don't get out as much as they should. And they, they, you know, they're stuck in, especially during the pandemic. That really was a worldly issue. You know, gyms were closed. Um, you know, people couldn't get out to go to the pool or anything, um, you know, in, in terms of uh, having recreation. Go ahead. you want to talk about that? Yes. Um, that is why what you have been doing, you know, is extremely vital, you know, um, in the discussion because community organizing and community activism usually highlights issues that are often underlooked. Uh, and, and sometimes people don't even know, people are not aware of, um, you know, the injustice and, you know, the marginalization and the um, underrepresentation of certain segments of society. So that's where community organizers and activists highlight, you know, these important issues. So if these issues are not being, you know, uh, discussed uh, uh, publicly, then you know, those who would uh, uh, make it happen would not even know about it. So, um, you know, that's why I support you and I support what you're doing and I support the platform because there are a lot of issues that you highlight, you know, uh, people will, you know, for the first time said, wow, I didn't know how important and how crucial, you know, these issues were to some people and some families. So now that I know better, you know, I am on the side of the advocate so that everybody, you know, will have, you know, um, uh, a place and, you know, opportunity to, you know, uh, take advantage of their talents and their gifts and their rights, the basic rights. So that's what I have to add to it. Um, okay. Now, uh, let's talk about now Africa, for example. Has Africa... Africa, uh, has Africa ever been in the Olympics um, that you know of? And if you want to talk about that and and the, because um, I know there are Special Olympics all over the place, and you know uh, in terms of global um, sports. Um, but if you want to talk about that and how other countries are viewed, there is a lot about this. Let's look at some of the athletes that I was watching. Including the athletes, but the year the toughest ones, you know, the biggest ones, uh, aspect that they're saying for Ethiopia and Kenya, they're the strongest part of the uh, Olympic game. But if you're looking at a few of the U.S. people who are trying to get into the medal, the medal for racing, that's going to be a very important one. Uh, one of which is, I find it among my uh, list here, is, well, I'm going to say one of the other ones. Ron, if you could talk a little bit louder, that would be great. Go ahead. All right. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the members of this year's uh, Olympic Games, of course, if you are a name, I mean, I'm going to get the name because everybody else is going to get I have no idea if I'm going to get right. But here is Abdul Jael, who is one of the heavy favorites, going to Sarah Archie. He's done 
that in male because she did a couple of males, one, in her event. And this is the one, one of the women who are these are outstanding pair of our three contenders. So I'm looking at her and it says she will be one of the persons to watch. And another person that I'm looking at right now is going to represent the U.S. that is also in the competition. And there's something, something like Foxy. It's one of another great one. It's almost like Laura Bowling. But Foxy is the one you need to watch this year. And one of the favorites, who's from Malaysia, is David Alfuel. Uh, uh, and Jeff Woody, and David, because sometimes he's a tough one. He's Jeffrey. Graham Abdu. Graz Abdu. I'm talking about that. Um, shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shakay, did you want to talk about Africa and how they fare in the, in the Power Olympics? Yes, you know, uh, Africans have always been part of the Olympics as well as the Paralympics. So, um, the Africans, you must divide them in two categories. Um, you have a lot of Africans uh, that, you know, have scattered all over the world and represent, you know, the countries that they currently reside. Um, you know, they're African to buy birth, but they're representing various, various countries throughout the world. So, and they have been doing extremely well in their fields of, uh, you know, uh, expertise. And then, you know, you have the Africans from the continent that also in some areas, you know, have always dominated their, you know, their fields. and. Um, so, but, you know, participation level, you know, have always been um, high. However, you know, when it comes to um, resources, because, you know, Africans on the continent, um, they do not, the athletes do not have the level of support that you would find the Western world or even, you know, the Latin America, you know, provide um, to their athletes. So that may hinder their participation, uh, and also it may hinder, you know, the level of sacrifice, you know, that they can um, tolerate uh, in uh, bringing home, you know, the medals that they are competing with. So, because the level of, you know, um, uh, support, financial support, as well as fan support, can really make or break you know, the spirit and the determination of these athletes. I mean, well, okay, so what do, you, uh, what do you mean by hindering the situation? You know, um, um, uh, I'll give you a perfect example. In the 90s, you know, I personally, you know, used to compete, you know, in taekwondo, uh, taekwondo you know, tournaments. And I remember... You know, one tournament, it was held during Ramadan, fasting, and we were in Washington, D.C. I was doing well uh, until the final, and the person that I was uh, fighting against, you know, it's like the entire, um, you know, group, spectators were rooting for him. I was fasting, I was alone, and they were cheering every move, and at the end, I almost like, it was like giving up or... You know, really say on that, you know, I don't have anybody here cheering me. I'm not going to disappoint anybody. I mean, I'm just saying this to say that if I had the level of, you know, audience support cheering me, I would have been, you know, uh, more determined not to disappoint them. Because sometimes, uh, you know, it gets to a point where you are representing a larger audience than your ambitions and personal goals. And that's what I mean by... You know, the support is very, very important. The financial support as well as, uh, you know, the audience. Now, why, why, is it, but why is it the financial support? You have to pay to, uh, to compete? You know, these athletes uh, sacrifice so much, you 
know, to travel, to train, and to, you know, forego a lot of things that, you know, will, uh, you know, prevent them from achieving, you know, financial, you know, gain from others. And sometimes they may not even pay, you know, um, the expenses associated with trainings and gyms and traveling and whatever. So there's, there's a burden you know, uh, overburdened by finances, uh, you know, by these athletes representing poorer countries versus, you know, the Western world where you have, you know, these endorsement deals and, you know, you have uh, corporations that, and, you know, spectators that are traveling and cheering and putting a lot of money, buying jerseys. So the financial aspect is, is a huge, huge motivation as well. No, but uh, in terms of like people with disabilities, people with special needs, um, do they get some kind of? I mean, they get they probably get sponsorship and and some other help, um, you know, from those endorsements or, or discounts of some sort. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't think. Uh, you know, actually, I was referring to the general uh, to the generality of sports and entertainment, but. When it comes to Paralympics, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the spiritual and the kindership and the nationalistic, you know, support, cheering people and, you know, being there for them, making them feel special, you know, these are very, very, very uh, powerful, motivational, you know, tools to be used. I mean, we're all human beings and we just don't want to disappoint those who love us, those who depend on our success. And that includes, you know, the people that are competing, whether they're on wheelchair or whether they have, you know, different abilities. But, you know, it is more of a, you know, being cheered on and being expected to win and achieve rather than uh, endorsement deals and money. Mm. Uh, Ron, did you want to uh, piggyback off that? Like, because um, I know when it comes to regular sports like baseball, you know, some of these players... Uh, get um, astronomical amounts of money, um, you know, when playing a game. Um, for example, like the NBA, some of those players get like uh, uh, millions of dollars. Yeah, uh, uh, um, uh, millions of dollars. In, in terms of wheelchair basketball, let's talk about that for a minute. Every single NBA team, has um, a wheelchair counterpart, okay? You, you have the New York Liberty, you have, because you have the Wheelchair Basketball Association, right? So you have the NBA, the New York Knicks has the wheelchair basketball, part of that, um, so on and so forth. Anything you want to talk about that and how the NBA and, and all the Wheelchair Basketball Association plays into that? Um, Shakay, do you, now, um, you mentioned poorer countries, okay? 
does recreation help these poorer countries, like help motivate them? Anything you want to talk about that and uh, and how that plays into it? Well, you know, um, uh, recreation, uh, you know, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, described, you know, in different terms. So when you talk about recreation in the Western um, concept, you know, it may be uh, uh, fully equipped you know, well-maintained gym where, you know, all the tools and, uh, you know, training are there and all the facilities. But for a country, they have the environment. You know, if you're a runner, you have the entire environment to run. You have the sun, you have the air, you have, you know, you have the mountain. So rather than being locked up in a gym, then, you know, you have the environment that is fertile you know, to promoting your, you know, strength building and, you know, uh, uh, endurances and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, they may have, uh, you know, different advantage, you know, as we're describing in terms of inclusivity. They may not have, you know, the resources, financial resources, you know, con- uh, concerning their training, but they have the environmental advantage, you know, where, you know, the restrictions are less, and you know the um, you know the elements of helping you you know perfect your craft you know are greater in these you know poorer environments. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, Shakay, let's let's go into world news for a minute and how people with disabilities are, are faring. You know, um, it, you know, news is, a, is an important part of, you know, getting the word out, especially when it comes to people with special needs and and and, and that kind of uh, situation. How has news been a problem? You know, news organizations are shutting down. Um, I think it's because of lack of resources. Like, for example, CBS News Radio 88 yesterday, yesterday was their last broadcast, you know, and it be, I mean, sports is taking over. WFAN in in New York and other sports stations are taking over. Sports is important information, but so is news. Um, anything? Um, I mean, why has news? I mean, that's why we exist. But uh, wh- why is news um, shut down? You know, or anything you want to talk about? You know how, especially when it comes to special needs information. I can give is BBC. You know, BBC World, you know, oftentimes when you watch their programming, you see individuals that represent so much diversity, racial, ethnic, uh, background, you know, cultural background, and also different abilities. You have individuals who are blind, individuals uh, on a wheelchair, you know, that, that, that is the kind of representation that we need from every part of the society. Because as we said here, you know, uh, concerning racial issue, you have to be able to see yourself in it to be it, to aspire, you know, to be it. Otherwise, if the door is always closed or you don't always see yourself or your kind, or the people with, uh, you know, your type of ability or uh, so-called disability, then, you know, you're seeing somebody else. That means that you are consuming, and but you are not a producer. Like, you know, the show that, you know, you're producing, you know, people can watch it and then they can relate and they can say, well, if he's doing it and he's targeting those with different abilities, then it is important, then I can relate to it. And so that rather than a person on a wheelchair saying, oh, this is not my kind of job, or my type of, uh, you know, vocational, um, you know, uh, thing, they say, no, I can do it because they're doing it. And therefore, they travel around the world covering different events, uh, and, you know, with wheelchair, then, or without being able to, you know, see, 
that I can do. It is extremely important to be inclusive of everything. For everything we do, we must include everybody because again, people have different abilities. They may not have legs and hands and may not see or hear, but that doesn't mean that they are totally disabled. So. Um, I believe that whether we're talking about Paralympics or General Olympics or any sport or entertainment or news or whatever it is, even uh, politicians and, you know, where decisions are being met, people must see themselves and their kind making, making it so that they will aspire to one day, if that is their dream, to also doing it. But if we don't see ourselves in it, it will be more difficult you know, to be to be in it, and that is my message. Uh, you know, to to your audience and to everybody else out there. Let us see ourselves in it, so that we can be aspired to be in it. Yeah. Um. Well. Uh, Ron, uh, we'll get to you in a second, but but uh, one thing I wanted to add as far as inclusivity, um, and in terms of giving people um spe- with special needs chances, for example. There's a um, a TV show with with um, with Gordon Ramsay, you know, Chef Gordon Ramsay, and it's called Hell's Kitchen. Okay, at the end of that, you know, it, it's regular people. Uh, uh, well, well, I said regular people, and I mean, what's normal these days? But you know, regular a regular person without a disability competing, um, you know, and at the end of the the show. Uh, you know, open your door, and if if your door opens, you win a um executive chef uh job at one of his restaurants, and then and then if somebody else's door open doesn't open, uh then that person is disappointed. Why can't, for example, why can't a person with a disability be an executive chef, or or you know like there's so many, uh, I mean there are people with disabilities working. But you know, um, anything you want to say about you know more about being inclusive and how important it is? Yes. Um, well, there is a there is a restaurant in, uh, on Long Island um, where it, it was profiled actually a couple of months ago, where they decided that the people people deem not to be material when it comes to providing food or, or cooking were their number one target and they're training them and they're helping them and they're guiding them and they're certifying them and they're the one that make up their staff and they're doing very well and the people who are there they're very happy they're very confident and they're looking forward to coming to work every single day because while people may think you need this and that to be this and that they're proving no these people are capable of providing what other people can provide just on their talent and their training and their ability. And therefore, why not give them chance? So that's one example. Another example is there is a company, manufacturing company called Nehemia Manufacturing, I think in the Midwest. Nehemia Manufacturing, 75% of their staff are either formally incarcerated or individuals, uh, you know, um, who have records. You know, these are the people that have a tough time getting job because of, you know, for various criminal, you know, records. But this company said, if you uh, make the mistake and you pay the price, then once you're done, the society must find a way to either rehabilitate you or to, uh, you know, give you a second chance. And now they're thriving, and the individuals that they hire, uh, 75% of them have records, but they're doing very well. Again, build up confident, and if they don't tell you who they are, you wouldn't know, because they are capable of providing the services in which they are hired, and the manufacturer is benefiting, the society is benefiting, and the people that would have been a liability and depend on public assistance and whatever are tax-paying proud citizens. So but, um, have- but getting to that, hold on, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, getting to that, um, isn't it true that if you're on public assistance, 
you can use your public assistance and work at the same time for that public assistance, no? Well, it depends. You know, it depends on, you know, public assistance is just like the correct correctional facility. These are temporary issues so that, you know, if you are on public assistance and it is a temporary, then you can build up. You have to go to school or you get training. So you build up yourself so that you will not be on in public assistance. But there are times where people are permanently under certain conditions. And in those cases, then they are entitled to whatever assistance they get lifetime because you know not everybody has the fortune to have two legs and two eyes and two ears and being able to do a lot of things therefore there are individuals and families that are permanently entitled you know to being assisted to the best of the sighted ability same thing with the correctional facilities you know it's not only a punishment but it's a correctional period and as long as the society see individuals uh, as potential providers, not recipients, then more people will be given the opportunity to provide. And the more people provide, the less, you know, uh, uh, we provide to others. And the ones who do deserve to be provided for will get ample resources so that they will not compete, you know, with able-bodied, marginalized individuals. Ron, did you want to talk about that? And, you know, we can get into, uh, you know, your show as well because you, you do a television program. Um, go ahead. You know, let's talk a little bit well, more about... Go ahead. Well, let's talk very quickly about when I did a follow-up on the WCBS. Uh, when I first listened to WCBS a long time ago, I remember 1987, the first year, the first day when WCBS got to all the radio. And it's just it's like they can get out some of the stuff like uh, music and they use program both on the um some five places. And it's just all time like a week later. And I was talking about that on um, this Friday show, the one I'll be doing I'll be airing Friday, because the your segment on the air on the Friday by the way, we'll talk about this later. Um, my phone the Friday has been for fifty seven great years, and I say fifty seven years. I wanted to um, 
say how important, you know, in, as far as radio is concerned, for example, there are countries, uh, Ireland uh, is one of them, uh, and they have um, programs where they train people with disab- people with special needs and people with many abilities in in radio and television you know to have their own programs as well as um, for example in Brazil there is a radio station that um, that a a, 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 men- a um, psychiatric hospital okay a psychiatric hospital um, in Brazil uses recreation to train people with uh, psychiatric issues um, uh, to have their own program, and it's called La Colifata. La Colifata is Spanish for, um, cra- you know, crazy. Um, um, but, you know, but... Um, they use that, uh, and they train them for jobs um, in radio, okay? And getting back to shutting down, uh, shutting down programs and shutting down news, I mean, we, we really shouldn't do that. I understand news and all of that um, costs money, but when you shut down programs, especially for people with disabilities who need it, like, you know, if you were to shut down Special Olympics or shut down the Power Olympics, that would be um, really horrible. Shakay, did you want to add to that? Go ahead. Go, hold on. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yes, you know, um, you know, the difference is that, the difference is that, you know, when you are uh, operating uh, in a market, with a lot of you know com- uh, competitors and a lot of options for, for for the consumers, then you know shutting down one or two or few may not be as uh, uh, you know detrimental as if you know a radio station, let's say in poorer countries, where almost all the news and you know the masses get their information from a radio program. That's a different story. So. Yes, as much as I love WCBS and as much as I depended on them during my taxi driving era, but I also know that in the last 30 years, there has been a complete transformation in how we consume news and how we fare news. So, and um, yes, you know, we wanted, you know, some of the pillars of, you know, our societal, um, you know, uh, uh, benefit to, to remain. But we also cannot deny, you know, the, you know, progress that are being made in, you know, in some industries and some departments and some areas. And I can go on in many, many different areas where innovation has pretty much eliminated what we once thought we can do without. Mm. But now, you know, we no longer, you know, need them as much as we used to do. So, you know, 1010 is there. You know, podcasts are there, and you know, online, you know, news retrieval, news sharing are there. So, you know, we don't want to lose a lot, but we also don't want to deny, you know, the benefit of innovation and newer technical, um, you know, contributions to our society. Does that? Does that? Is that the same as far as sports? You know, uh, we. You know, when it comes to people with special needs? No, uh, you know, as you had um, uh, alluded earlier in Ireland and Brazil, you know, people have been thinking out of the box in terms of not, um, you know, putting every person in, in, in the same category. People are thinking and people are innovating uh, new ways of, uh, you know, including people that used to be marginalized or relegated to certain basic, uh, you know, uh, services. So uh, because of that, the special needs also have thinkers and innovators that are making their lives a lot more manageable, a lot more inclusive, and a lot easier. So, um, 
you know, just like you said, you know, uh, the examples of Ireland and Brazil, and there are many, many, many other uh, places and organizations that have been very, you know, uh, mindful of, you know, different uh, consumers and their needs. Um, getting to sports again, uh, it, you know, um, I just created um, a couple of weeks ago, actually a couple of months ago, um, Orca Media, by the way, this um, program, Able to Nine Air Live, is going to be put in post-production at um, orcamedia.net, and uh, we're going to air it. But uh, I just created a couple of uh, months ago, uh, Gridiron Sports Talk, which is a, a program about wheelchair sports and other uh, sports. But um, recently, I, I talked about uh, Casey Martin, for example, who's a... Um, a golfer with special needs and he had to get um, permission from the Supreme Court uh, to use a golf cart to help him despite his challenges. I mean, they, they were really giving him a problem when it comes to using a golf cart and the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, anything you want to talk about um, accessibility and sports and, and having to fight um, to even use a golf cart? Go ahead, Shake. Yes, yes. Don't forget, um, it takes time for us to catch up with current issues. So if we do things one way or we have, uh, you know, one way of believing that things should be done this way because it has always been done and this is how you know, a golf course, uh, you know, uh, looks like and who, people who play them, this is how they should behave, how they should dress, these are the tools that they normally use. So some people, you know, hang up to those mentalities and for them to change, you know, will take long, long time and in some cases it will take big fights, you know, to get them to see you know, the reality, and this, uh, you know, maybe law enforcement, courts, and whatever, same thing, you know, some judges and some, you know, uh, doctors, some providers, teachers, people, it takes time for some people to change and, uh, and understand that, well, yeah, even though it has been done this way for centuries, but there are better ways, or there are more appropriate ways, or there are easier way, or there are more efficient ways, so, um, if, you know, you don't see individuals with, you know, um, uh, cards, you know, being driven around and people say, oh, no, 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 this is not part of the game, therefore we're going to fight it because we want this and that. But, you know, I'm glad that the person fought and I'm glad that, you know, people realize that, hey, there are different ways of skinning, I mean, uh, uh, skinning the cat. And so, you know, kudos to, to him. Okay, so, um, Shake, uh, do you want to talk, and then Ron, we'll get to your television program. Um, Shake, did you want to um, talk about, you know, the Bronx Post and what you're doing? Uh, you know, we can talk about that and promote you for, for a bit. Go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much for it. You know, Bronx Post is an addition to an existing media organization that has been very successful. We, unlike many other entrepreneurs, we did not come to media business by way of making money or because of our expertise. We came to media business because after 9-11, you know, as Muslim community in New York, we thought that the Muslims must be vocal, must be visible, and must represent truth justice and peace rather than allowing these uh you know violent um idiots who are committing heinous crimes in the name of the religion being whether they're suicide bombers whether they're terrorists whether they're plane hijackers whether they're murderers we wanted to create a media platform where we communicate with the general public about what islam is and what is truth and what is falsehood what is right and what is wrong. And that's how we came, you know, to publishing a newsletter called a Youth Community Report, which became Muslim Community Report, which later became Muslim Media Corporation. That is now publishing five newspapers. And the Bronx Post is the latest addition to it. And also, to talk about the Bronx a little bit, which you know very well, 
bras has been abandoned by the mainstream media completely. They left. There is nothing, not a remnant of mainstream media operating in the Bronx. And when they do report on the Bronx, it all was always negatives and violence and anything else except what is helpful to the Bronx side. So what we decided to do is that since they left, let us fill up the vacuum. Let us create Bronx Post so that we can report from one neighborhood to another, the entire Bronx County, and we can uplift the Bronx side and we can highlight the developments and the progresses. And when we do have to report on the negative, we report it in a way that is fair, balanced, and accurate. So uh, next month, the Bronx Post website will be live, and it will be a great, great pillar, you know, of, uh, you know, uplifting the Bronx so that, you know, people can depend on news that is fair and accurate and reflect of the new bronze versus, you know, continuing to dwell on the past bronze that is very negative, you know, very impoverished, very violent. And mm-hmm. so that is what the bronze post will be doing uh, in the come next month. Well, um, Ron, did you want to promote your show? Go ahead. I'd like to answer that because I'm so kind to tell you. Okay, actually, though, I'm old, to be sure, and, uh, of course, the senior executive of Goldberg, it's about to end year nine. We're getting ready for year ten this year. It's coming up over the next season, and we're getting ready to get ready for the countdown to three hundred shows. It's all about how uh, much they're going to do, and if they're having a great game show, Bob Marley Classic, game show to your playback, music performances from Open Mike, and of course, Larry himself. Are able on their classic speaking some of the way back questions from this other show called Special People, Special Issues. And at this point, we've done about eight episodes of them, including coming up this week, because you have a guest that has featured Ann E. Watson, who is a former mayor of Vermont, now a senator. Yeah, um, actually, actually, yes, um, Senator Ann Watson will be coming on Able Dinner on Air Live. On September 10th. So, thank you for a reminder of that. Um, thank you, Juan, and welcome. And of course, we'll air that. As a matter of fact, we'll air this episode, the last episode, this coming Friday. So, you get to see her first interview with Juan and Laura Lee. That's going to be great. And uh, for the first anniversary coming up, there's going to be a lot more surprises and questions from everywhere, even from New Jersey and all across the Jersey side, because we've been seeing a lot of surprises. Uh, the Sam Diversity will feature a big 300 show coming up in April of next year. Uh, first of April. It's going to be a combination 10th anniversary and 300 show. So there's going to be a lot of surprises coming up, a lot of big stuff going on. And you can watch it in Brooklyn on RexArtMedia.org. So, so your show, oh, so hold on. So your show, uh, road trip with Ron Rondon is www dot uh, dot brick. Yeah, so it's www dot brickartsmedia dot org. That's www dot brickartsmedia dot org. For Ron, for road trip with Ron Mondin, um, he talks about sports and um, everything. You know, we'll get to the Yankees in a minute. Um, but uh, and Chike, uh, uh, what is your? Yeah. Um, Yeah, um, Shakay, did you want to talk about the Bronx Post and where people can find that, or the web the website's not up yet? No, the website is not up yet. However, uh, since we have four other websites that are on, they can check NewYorkParrot.com. 
So it's www.newyorkparrot.com. The Muslim Media, so it's www.muslimmediacorporation.com. Um, the Muslim Parrot, as well at dot com, as well as the Parchester Times dot com. Okay. Um, well, um, we, we're going to stick around for the next hour for more resources. And um, I would like to thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on Ableton On Air Live. Um, but before we go, um, when we talk about uh, the future of, you know, people with special needs in sports, how, how do we see um, sports and recreation going into the future? I mean, both of you guys can chime in on this. And to me, I want to say, every athlete around here, please, you never give up whatsoever if you are hurt or anything else. And you still have the passion, passion to support everything there is. There's one thing you say, please, anyway, do not give up yourself. You be a part of sports history. And if you can continue to do something, even if you're able or not, I want you to keep trying. Don't give up nothing. Just keep trying. Face your pack. Face your goal. That's all I want. Okay, uh, Shike, we'll give your your information one more time. Uh, for more information on the Muslim Media Corporation, you can go to www.muslimmediacorporation.com. For more information on the Parkchester Times, which is in the Bronx, you can go to www.parkchestertimes.com. I'm also a reporter for that. Um, you uh, you can go to the uh, the Muslim Parrot www.muslimparrot.com if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the New York Parrot, uh, www.newyorkparrot.com. Anything else I'm missing, Shake? No, you've, uh, you know, you've said all. What I wanted to say about the future with uh, special needs uh, people is that the future belongs to all of us, and therefore nobody should be left behind. We should all... Uh, march together, walk together, run together, and enjoy life and compete together, regardless of our different abilities or special needs. Uh, Ron, um, um, so let let's give your a website, and we're gonna give you a website one more time. Uh, for I'll give you the whole way. I'll give you the whole way. There we go. Watch it live, eleven thirty. On Friday night, of course, it's up early, 4.30 a.m. to 5 a.m., same website right there. You can also check out uh, all of our best episodes on our brand new and reconstructed YouTube page, and that is Roadshow for Ron Ryan TV Show on YouTube. Check out all the past episodes, you can this season's episode. Okay, um, again, I would like to thank you guys for joining me. Um, stay tuned for the next hour with more resources. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on Abled and On Air Live. Um, much appreciated. Let me give your websites one more time. Uh, uh, www.newyorkparrot.com www.parkchestertimes.com um, um, uh, www.muslimmediacorporation.com and um, and you know thank you so much Shake. Um, again the um, the Bronx Post is not up yet but stay tuned uh, and uh, Ron's um, www dot brickartsmedia dot org um, and look out for Ron Rondon's road trip uh, a road trip with Ron Rondon um, thank you Shakay uh, much appreciated uh, 
and thank you for sponsoring a bull dinner on air. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ron, um, yeah. let's real quick, uh, if you have a couple of minutes, let's talk about the uh, New York Yankees and um, the baseball season. Go ahead. Talking about, re- really quick, talking about pitchers. Now, we can talk about this for a couple of minutes. Uh, one of the sports shows that I did on Gridiron Sports Talk, I talked about Jim Abbott. Uh, Jim Abbott is the one-handed pitcher uh, with the New York Yankees uh, in terms of, um, you know, pitching with one arm. You want to talk about that for a minute? the baseball players that had uh, disabilities. Okay, um, let's get into, um, before we let you go, we're going to, um, you know, the New York Yankees, for example, um, the New York Yankees actually, um, they're 78 and 54, um, let me turn down the mic here, um, the last game, the last game they played, uh, was yesterday, and they were they were playing the Washington Nationals, and the the score, 
The score for that was five to two. Uh, the the Yankees five, Washington Nationals two. And they have done so well with these home runs because every home run they got really slows down Washington. And I'll tell you one thing for sure: when you see Judge, when you see DJ, and Soto, this is a team that you are looking for. And when you look for the, the remainder of the season, it just continues down to the home stretch of the baseball team. To see both teams, the Yankees and the Orioles, that's representing the East, and also the Cleveland Guardians, if you get that, they're all the same in the mix. This stuff can be just to go down the stretch. One of these three teams is going to end up being the best in the American League, as that's the number one ranked team. And don't forget, because you are Kansas Dodgers, and the Philadelphia Phillies are the other two who are looking for the best in the National League. But remember, any one of these five teams could end up being the best in baseball. The best team has get every fair home field. It's what we're looking for. And the season could be decided before the end of the um, do you think a do you think a rookie um in terms of salary um do you think no um i mean let's not talk about salary but do, do do you think um i mean is it a draft pick like the n f l how how do they pick baseball players well the end of the uh, high school baseball did they have the draft over at the m l b studios over in Chicago, New jersey and they have a lot of great professional uh, from school, college, and high school players in the mix. And then they will think about a draft pick to see who is he going and who's going to be playing in, in a minor league system that represents their team. Like, for example, like the Dodgers and the Washington National, mostly the Yankees got some of the Patriots and the Long Island Ducks, the minor league teams. The Mets was got the New York Henry uh, team, and I don't know if he's for it, but never been. These are going to be picked sometime in June, and then they will send their minor league team to get their start. But small with the A level, and then you go all the way to the play. And if they like it so much, and the team and the team uh, ownership likes it, they can go into the major league. So you never know. What? So, so minor league teams are like um, college teams. I mean, I mean, we have the Vermont Mountaineers, which is a college team, and that kind of thing. And then all, um, also is the Burlington, the Vermont Lake Monsters. Um, but is, are the minor the minor leagues, do they get salaries? I mean, how does that work? Well, they, well, they do get salaries in the, uh, in the minor league system. And they will get paid. So pretty much when the major league is paid, the minor leagues will also get paid for what they've done, their service, their work, and a lot of the baseball here, here, here. Level, the double A level, the double A level, something like that. This is how you begin the start going away to the major. And if they get the major, they're going to get like a monster salary based on what they played this year. So, minus start first and they get. Okay, well, um, for more information on your, on your, uh, on your TV show, you can go to www.brickartsmedia.org. Um, road trip with road trip with Ron Ronda. Uh Ron, one more question I was going to ask you: How did you get? Because um, I remember at at one point you were doing uh, a show on talkshoe.com, which is no more. Yeah. Um, but how did you become a sportscaster or interested in sports despite your disability, despite your special need? Well, I started sports. Uh, I've been, I've been in fashion sports for so many years. Fall basketball, baseball, hockey. I'll never say. So, when you first remember, I think I got out this year, probably getting hurt at the Okay Burn. And then I got out of the Okay Burn. And then I got out of the Okay Burn. And then I got out of the Okay Burn. And then I got out of the Okay Burn. 
portfolio and just work for the very first time? Well, I did. They first four school, first time I've done that, they told me I'm an asshole. Then, when you do something that that is called say, okay, but well, either way, I did a vow for about six months holding for you turn. And the nicest part about it, I started for band in December, and the first show was actually outside near uh, the Tank Nero Festival in Little Italy, the Hyde Park after there. It was a lot of fun doing the you know, show from there, and then I was here every week for seven years. We did about over 500 shows in the seven years we were doing the daily weekend show for the last two years. And then when it came, what board got me is the Game Show Block Party in 2008. And they said, you've been a regular in the Game Show Block Party and you're doing a good job and everything else. And after me, and the same thing you asked me too, um, they said, can you hold the show on TV? And then, yes, I did. I did. This is practice run in 2013 in Boston. And then um, we showed the show box record back then it's over to you. And then when I came to 2014, or 15, because you asked me to go to press, I went there, signed up, went to the show, hosted the show, first the show, I interviewed on third, I came to what party, that he wants me to host the show. And then it was, and then it's going on from here, from doing different locations everywhere, from, for uh, example, there is a uh, Rock and Rock Rally in Marlboro and the Bronx in Brooklyn. Well, yes, um, for those that need to know, Special People, Special Issues ended up in, um, ended in the Bronx. Uh, we ended that in May of 2015. So, yeah, um, but now we're doing Ableton on Air, Ableton on Air Live, which is um, the premier uh, live program here in beautiful Barrie, Vermont. Uh, by the way, uh, we are um, special thanks uh, to our friend, uh of Able to Learn Air Live, J.D. Green, and Fly on the Wall Productions, because without um, them, um, we wouldn't, uh, you know, special thanks to his men mentorship, and uh, everybody in Vermont who has been mentoring uh, me thus far, uh, when it comes to um, being the premier host, and uh, Ron, we thank you for your service as um, despite your challenges in um, it, whatever your challenges are, um, thank you for hosting Ron Rondon, uh, a road trip with Ron Rondon for so many seasons and so many years. www.brickartsmedia. Um, uh, I mean, um, you know, let's talk about Brick Arts Media for a minute before we let you go. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful. Uh, Brick Arts Media is a wonderful television station in Brooklyn. They have they have uh, performing art spaces. They have you know you can bring bands there. You can do a whole lot, um, you know, as well as Bronxnet, where I came from. Um, Bronxnet uh, is at Neiman College, but public access media and community media should remain. I mean, now you have streaming. You have you know, we cannot get rid of public media. It's extremely important to let people know that, you know, um, you know, why can't a normal Joe or a normal person, I mean, again, what's normal? Uh, why can't we have uh, more television shows for people with disabilities, for, for, for people with special needs? 
Well, let me put it to you this way, too. We need a lot more people around here because we got, because we have about uh, 40, more than 40 great years of great programming. And number two, this is a lot of great years that this cable network has been blessed. We've got four regular networks, plus eight years. And we're spreading uh, the best in cloth, entertainment, children's skills, public affairs, even for our language because in Brooklyn, I don't want to say it in my heart. I have no more money at the time. Um, Brooklyn, they are definitely have a lot of people. There's a lot of people that can see the most majority of people. Because one people get AC, CO, they say, this is the station. This is the one that everybody wants more. They have some more Chinese people. They want to have more people watching Chinese, Spanish, same deal. And even Italian. You never know. Yeah, the only thing the only thing you can't get in Vermont is a pastrami sandwich. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, we, we definitely need we definitely need more pastrami in, in 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 um in Vermont. You can't get a corned beef sandwich, you 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 can't get a pastrami sandwich. You know, you, you know, I mean, I mean, forget about sports for me. I mean, look, Yankee Stadium. Let's talk about this for a second. Yankee Stadium, Met Stadium, okay, for a hot dog and a watered down beer, you're gonna pay like twenty five, thirty dollars. A family of look, a fa- <laughs> the the hell with that. I mean, come on, God damn it. The the a family of four, a family of four. How the fuck are you? Go- how the fuck are you gonna pay? Five hundred dollars for tickets, food, transportation. I mean, come on. I mean, There's too much for everything. And let me tell you something. I mean, you can't get. I mean, you you cannot get a Yankee ticket and a hot dog on food stamps for God's sakes. It it it. it, Because I remember this is this is true. I remember Yankee Stadium when you play nineteen and this is what it says. Someone in the stadium to have a full. And, uh, I mean this 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 this, bu- this bullshit. This is not 1966 prices, for God's sake. No way, not good on that. And I remember I just heard in one of the commercials a station that told us they said that they have a whole dollar that one dollar you pay for the game and you get the dollar dog. Why not every other ticket? I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you one prime, ex- <laughs> God damn it! I'll give you, I'll give you one prime example, <laughs> right? One prime example. Yeah. Say, say it's nineteen. I remember my father used to tell me, right? Nineteen forty, uh, okay, nineteen forty-six. After the war, forty-five, forty-six, right? right? You can take your, you can take your wife or or your significant other. To, uh, to go get a meal at White Castles, still have money left for a movie ticket, a, a Broadway show, and still come back with five cents or, or fifty cents. Now you can't even go, you can't do a goddamn thing. <laughs> so why why are you gonna pay? Why why uh, and, and 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 the thing is some of these ball um. Some of these ball, um, these, um, these baseball games, okay, um, these stadiums, okay, you have hot dogs, you have beers, but what the fuck, why are you selling sushi for like uh, $75 a plate and, and, and then a ticket? It's ridiculous. Give, give us, a, give us a goddamn special... Listen, listen, I'll come to New York and I'll advocate. I'm special needs. You know, charge me a dollar for everything, right? Yeah, I will. 
Anyway, I want to thank you for um, joining me on Able Door on Air Live. You're always welcome uh, to come. Next time, we got to get you to come to Vermont. I'm sorry it wasn't this time, but we, we definitely have to have you come to Vermont and be a guest on Able Door on Air Live. Again, www.brickartsmedia.com for forward, forward slash one. Um, special thanks to Ron Rondon and his uh, sports um, his sports knowledge uh, and being a sports anchor for Ableton on Air and Ableton on Air Live. And uh, thank you so much, Ron. You are so welcome. Have a joyful Labor Day weekend and the rest of your summer. Yes. Um, thank, thank you so much. www.brickartsmedia.com. Um, Ron, Ron, road trip with Ron Rondon, uh, and uh, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. More information on Able to End on Air Live. Again, uh, those websites for those who uh, need it. Um, we are still on the air for the next half an hour, and I'm going to be giving uh, plenty of resources for those who need it. Um, uh, www.brickartsmedia uh, uh, forward slash one uh, for Ron Rondon's uh, road trip with Ron Rondon and those websites for Shake Musa um director of Muslim Media Corporation www.parkchester um, par- uh, www. Times dot com uh, www.muslimmediacorporation.com, uh, www.newyorkparrots.com, and, um, and other websites. Uh, his number, if you need his information for the Muslim Media Corporation, 718-822-5555. That's 718 718- Eight two two five 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 five. Uh, for more information, by the way, on Orca Media, um, Ableton on Air, www.orcamedia.net, and um, the Gridiron Sports Talk, www.orcamedia.net. Um, I want to give information on uh, the. I want to give information on the Power Olympics. The Power Olympics. Uh, Start tomorrow, um, August 28th, uh, and um, let's get that information on that um, again. So we're going to um, get that information on the, on the Power Olympics. Um, it starts tomorrow and goes until September 8th, um, which is uh, very important to know. Um, let me just get that real quick so people can uh, get that information. So the Paralympics Paris uh, 2024 it, it starts uh, tomorrow and goes until September 8th, 2024. Wheelchair basketball, wheelchair fencing, uh, bocce ball, wheelchair baseball and many 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 others um it's extremely important for recreation programs to continue um and um also uh, i wanted to uh give an important resource if you're interested in in wheelchair basketball you can go to www.wn so www um nba.org the wheelchair basketball association um let's get to that real quick so we can uh give that resource um let me give you that resource that's extremely important um for that the wheelchair basketball association uh we need to give that resource immediately 
um, to our viewers. Um, So the Wheelchair Basketball Association, um, it's, it's extremely important. Let me give you that. Um, so that's the NWBA. So that's um, www.nwba.org. And on this website, um, I don't know if anybody can see this. Um, probably not, but I, I can put this in post-production. Um, the... Uh, the Wheelchair Basketball Association, uh, basically on top, uh, if you want to get on top of the website, if you want to get involved, you, you click there. Um, if you want to become a member or form a team, um, you know, teamwork is, um, it, by the way, there's a clock here that says um, that there are 20, uh, 23 hours and 45 minutes left um, if uh, you want to register for the NWBA. Every single uh, team and in the NBA, um, every single team in the NBA has a wheelchair uh, counterpart uh, when it comes to uh, sports. So www.nwba.org. That's www dot nwba dot org personally in my opinion vermont should have a wheelchair team um you know we need to have more recreation when it comes to people with disabilities um so www dot nwba dot org and uh www dot nwba dot org and <clears throat> The website, once again, for the Paralympics is www.paralympics.org, uh, www.paralympics.org. Uh, the Paralympics are tomorrow, um, starting on the 28th and going to September 8th. Um, and uh, one thing I'm going to say, it's extremely important to not get rid of these programs uh, when it comes uh, to uh, people with disabilities. Uh, we must uh, keep these programs going. Um, speaking of programs, um, next week, I, I wanted to bring this up before we continue our resources for the next 45 minutes. Um, next week, uh, we have special guests uh, coming to... Um, to Ableton on Air Live after Labor Day, September 3rd, Washington County Mental Health will be here. Um, they have programs. Uh, one of the programs they have is short-term counseling. Come talk to us about your flood-related stress. Um, if you would like to talk up to Washington County Mental Health Services, there is no wait list. You can call 802-229-0591. That number again is 802-229-0591 and ask to speak to someone about your flood-related stress. There is, um, you can receive three to five sessions at no cost. Again, you can receive three to five sessions at no cost. There is no record keeping, so you are not, um, you don't have to file as a patient of Washington County Mental Health. If you decide and need more services, they can help you with that. Um, 802-229-0591. Again, 802-229-0591. And, um, I'm going to mention this. If anyone needs extra help in Vermont and beyond, if you're listening in another state, this resource can help you. Um, please call pound 988. Again, pound 988. It is a lifeline for those that need. Um, if you are... Um, suicidal or or um planning on this uh, please don't um 
Your life is very precious. Please call pound 988 when it comes to mental health services. It's a national helpline. Um, and for more information on Washington County Mental Health, 802-229-0591. They will be here next week. Um, several people will be in studio at Fly on the Wall Productions to talk about how important um, these services are really. Um, they're at no cost. Um, uh, some of them, and they'll help you with your insurance if you have problems. If you have problems with your insurance, they'll they'll definitely help you. They will not turn you away. Um, they've been Washington County Mental Health has been a supporter and a sponsor of um, Able Den on Air and and Able Den on Air Live. They are also a very big supporter, and um, they're coming next week. Um, for more information, by the way, if anyone needs, I'm talking about sports, if anyone needs Special Olympics, that's www.specialolympics.org, that, um, spo.org, specialolympics.org, um, if you want more information on that, um, these recreation programs are so important, um, we cannot have, um, too much, um, programs, you know, uh, people with special needs cannot be shut-ins. The pandemic was so bad with that, where people had no programs to go to, they can, they were only able to go to the store, and they were only able to go to the pharmacy, but we need to keep these programs open. It's m most important to keep Sports programs, um, especially now, um, school is starting. Um, you know, keep music in the schools. Uh, don't get rid of um, that. Uh, teachers should not, um, talking about this for a minute, teachers should not be buying their own supplies. They should be supplying stuff. Why are teachers buying their own damn supplies? I mean, Everybody needs, I understand everybody needs to get paid, but um, we need to keep these programs open. You know, if we don't keep these programs open, there are going to be too many shut-ins, you know, when it comes to people with special needs. It's just vitally important. Again, Washington County Mental Health, next week, um, 802-229-0591. Uh, Special Olympics, www.specialolympics.org. The Paralympics is paralympics.org, www.powerolympics.org. The uh, NWBA, um, www.nwba.org. We must keep these programs open. And um, I know this has nothing to do with it, but um, everybody loves music. Um uh, J.D. Green and Fly in the Wall Productions, as well as Aired Out, is, they're promoting uh, September 6th to September 8th, 2024, in Bradford, in the Bradford Fairgrounds in Bradford, um, Vermont. Um, the Green Mountain Reggae Festival, September 6th to September 8th, at the Bradford Fairgrounds in Bradford, Vermont, and it is sponsored by uh, East Coast. It's sponsored by um, uh, many other sponsors will be there, including Stoneleaf and, and including um, other sponsors as well. Um, so come out September 6th to September 8th at the Bradford Fairgrounds in Bradford, uh, Vermont. Don't, don't come smoking, don't come smoking, but come, uh, come to sleep out in the outdoors and, uh, come to listen to some wonderful reggae. Um, we just need to keep these programs open because without these programs, uh, you know, people with special needs wouldn't exist. Uh, everybody needs music. Everybody needs sports um there was um you know really quick um i remember my uh, my um physical education teacher in school you know we you know uh, he he caused me to lose weight uh, i'm i'm still working on it 
but then again, you know, everybody needs to lose weight and have just have some fun when it comes to sports. Um, so I would like to um, uh, um, say a couple of more things when it comes to sports and recreation. One of the biggest things that helped my life uh, growing up uh, was physical therapy. You know, um, Montpelier, Mon- in Montpelier, across the street, uh, Integrated Family Medicine uh, is a wonderful organization through a Central Vermont Medical Center, and they have physical therapy. But one of the programs that really helped my life, um, the Kennedy Center in the Bronx, um, they helped me, you know, without the Kennedys, um, there wouldn't be Special Olympics. There wouldn't be physical therapy. Um, there just wouldn't be um, a lot of stuff. In 1964, 1963, 1964, um, President Kennedy put forth, before he passed away, he, he put forth um, the Mental Retardation Act, which um, began a whole lot of things when it comes to um, stopping, well, I shouldn't say stop mental retardation, but, uh, but you know, give people life instead of death. Uh, be, you know, mental retardation, uh, back then, people were misdiagnosed um, when I was growing up. Um, a lot of people were misdiagnosed um, being mentally retarded, uh, but now we call it developmental disability or intellectually challenged. So, um, for more information, if you want information on Kennedy's life, President Kennedy's life, and the Special Olympics, uh, you can go to the uh, National Kennedy Library at um, www.kennedylibrary.org, um, and um, you can also check out uh, the Special Olympics there. Eunice Kennedy Shriver um, started that organization uh, with um, the Kennedy family. And, w- and without them, um, none of this would be uh, possible. So um, if you would like to also see uh, or listen uh, to other resources in Able to Learn Live, or you want to, if you want us to have a special guest, please uh, contact uh, me at um, lawrencesiler79 at gmail.com. And um, look at uh, the uh, also the um, Abled in On Air podcast page on Facebook, as well as my um, as as well as my uh, resources for Orca Media www.orcamedia.net. Um, Abled in On Air Live will continue over the next. Um, forever and ever, um, because it's a powerful resource for the Vermont community. So those websites again for today. Um, if you need um the Special Olympics, www.specialolympics.org, and um, Ron Rondon can be found at brickartsmedia.org um, forward slash brickartsmedia one. Um and look up Brick Arts Media on YouTube, uh, as well as well as Ron Rondon and um, special thanks to our phone guests today who were part of Able on on air live. Um, next week again, September third, is Washington County Mental Health. Um, they are bringing several people to talk about resources. On September 10th, we have, um, we have in studio, we have uh, Senator Ann Watson, who is uh, coming on, and we have a special guest on the phone, Gary Axelbank from BronxNet Television um, in the Bronx, um, one of the foremost resources when it comes to Bronx TV. He has a podcast that he's going to talk about. But Senator Ann Watson is um, coming on as well. Um, again, I would like to thank everyone for joining me on Abled and On Air Live. Um, and um, again, if you want to find out more resources, by the way, Aired Out airs tomorrow 
um, J.D. Green and Fly in the Wall Productions has aired out in the morning, www.airedoutvt.com. That's www.airedoutvt.com. Fly in the Wall Productions present a wonderful show, aired out, um, it, it's a gas, it's fun, nobody's naked, um, everybody um, has wonderful guests on Air Out, so um, it, thanks to J.D. Green, Fly on the Wall Productions, and Abel Done on Air Live, um, we'll continue with wonderful resources um, in the coming weeks. Um, fast forwarding, fast forwarding to um, October 8th. Now, during our pilot show, we had a wonderful um, guest, Kim McNicholas, and we had a mother who um, dealt with diabetes and was a diabetic amputee. But coming on August 8th, um, thanks to Kim McNicholas and, um, and um, the way to my heart dot org and the global pad um association we have a um a diabetic um uh, she is a nurse practitioner and her name is Deirdre and she will be here on August eighth by phone and we will talk um to her about diabetes if you um take insulin if you take um many medications we will dispel the myths of those medications we will dispel the myths of insulin we will do, um, you know metformin many of those medications um and if you use a if you use uh something called the libre 2 um we will dispel the myths of that um, and we will also um, dispel the myths of a good diet, bad diet, bad cholesterol, good cholesterol, anything um, that um, dealing with diabetes we will definitely talk about. Um, it's extremely important to um, keep listening to Ableton on Air live um, over the next couple of months. I'm booked out six months ahead and and you know, for the rest of the year. Um, if you want to come on Able to End On Air live, um, email me at lawrencesiler79 at gmail.com. Um, no interview is a, is a bad interview. So if you want to be, um, e if you want to be interviewed, w um, lawrencesiler79 at gmail.com. Again, you can find, um, Able to on air live at www.airedoutvt.com. Um, and for more information on um, other sports programs, um, it, there's a wonderful sports program um, at the Kennedy Center in the Bronx. For more information on that, um, I know we live in Vermont, but who knows who's listening in the Bronx? Um, you can go to www.kennedycenterbronx.org um, um, and um, you can look them up and um, see their wonderful resources. Without the Kennedy Center in the Bronx uh, in Pelham Parkway, I wouldn't be um, where I am today. You know, spe um, these sports programs and these physical therapy programs are more important to anyone dealing with an intellectual challenge. Um, you know, despite um, my cerebral palsy, I ended up um, as, as a journalist, and so can you. Um, if you're interested in having a show on Orca Media, um, please um, go to www.orcamedia.net. See the people at Orca Media, which is at 62 Ridge Street, in Montpelier, the College of Fine Arts, Science Building, and they will be glad. Um, you have to be a Montpelier resident or any um, resident. You know, you can be in Barrie, um, parts of Barrie, and they'll help you put a show together. Um, don't be afraid to have your own show. Uh, like Shikane Musa Drame said, 
uh, on today's show, community media is vitally important. Without community media, we wouldn't uh, be journalists. And it's extremely important to keep these programs open, not closed. Um, we we are having an election year. We must tell um, the president of the United States, keep these programs open um, because without them, people wouldn't exist. We cannot be shut-ins. Um, you know, we just can't. Um, who, who the heck wants to stay home every day and do nothing? Um, you know, so do something. Create something. It's important to create and keep creating. Uh, create community media in some way, form, or, or fashion. Um, so... Um, I would like to thank everybody for joining me on Able to End on Air Live. I was going to continue for the next, I think I might continue for the next 15 minutes with some more resources. Um, for those that are interested in um, wheelchair, um, by the way, if you are a veteran, uh, you know, we must support our veterans. Um, if you are a veteran and in need of sports programming or recreation programming, um, Wounded Warriors is a vital, vital, vital um, uh, program in and around the country. We don't really support our veterans the way we should. Okay? Um, so, for more information on Wounded Warriors... And um, you can get therapy from them. You can get recreation programs from them. Um, www.woundedwarriors.org. www.woundedwarriors.org. If you have um, if you have brain injury or TBI um, and need help from the. Uh, there's a wonderful organization that I did some webinars for, uh, the, um, the, uh, there's, um, so let me, let me look up the website, um, so there's a, a website here, um, so the, um, Alliance on Brain Injury, you can go to www.brainjuryalliance.org, um, the Brain Injury Alliance Vermont .org. Um, I did a wonderful, a wonderful um, webinar <coughs> uh, several weeks ago called uh, "God Wants Me to um, Make Lemonade," and I gave resources. So um, look up that webinar. Um, at the BrainInjuryAlliance.org, um, Vermont, uh, they're a wonderful um, agency. And um, if you are in need, if you are a veteran, and um, I know this has nothing to do with sports, but um, if you are a veteran and need Social Security, um, please go see, I, I understand there's a waiting list, but please go see the Montpelier Social Security Office, and they will help you, or any Social Security Office in um, in and around Vermont and in and around um, the na national um, area. If you are in need of Social Security because of your disability, um, you can call the following number, 1-800-772-1213. Um, that is... 1-800-772-1213 and um, tell them you're a veteran or if you are an amputee um, and in need of resources, um, uh, you can also uh, contact them and they can help you. Um, there's a whole list. In order to um, collect Social Security, your disability has to be on that list. Um, don't make something up and think you're going to get Social Security. It doesn't happen that way. But, um, uh, you know, keep these programs open. We cannot cut Social Security like the um, like former presidents have said. 
Uh, we need to keep these programs open. Um, you know, recreation programs, job programs, um, Higher Ability Vermont, help me. Um, if you're in need of a job program and you are challenged, you can go to higherability.org, www.higherabilityvermont.org, and uh, go see them and tell them Larry sent you. Um, it's important for these resources to keep on going. Um, so with that said, um, I'm going to end Able Then on Air today, but um, one piece of commentary before I end. Um, when you perform sports or you perform recreation, you can't do it naked. There's no naked Olympics, okay? So we must stop the naked Olympics from happening. Um, I mean, okay, we have the naked bike ride. We have um, certain naked um, uh, resources, but um, I won't be giving those naked resources out um, today. So we, you must stay clothed when you're doing sports. Um yeah, you don't want to drop a javelin in the wrong place, and or you know, or, or throw a, a medicine ball in the wrong place, and and then you then you would definitely have uh, problems. So, I would like to thank JD Green and Fly in the Wall Productions for Able Den on Air for letting us uh, come and do Able Den on Air live forever and ever and ever. Thank you to Ron Rondon and Shakay Musa Drame today. Um, you know, keep these programs open. So, um, I would like to again uh, thank um, Fly on the Wall Productions for Able to Learn Your Live and see you next week with Washington County Mental Health um, and um, and uh, able and on air live thank you so much for listening to able and on air live i'm lawrence seiler <laughs>